I wrote a poem in a puddle of tears many dark moments ago, and it ended like this. The boy was anxious, drifting into a cloudiness of numb. He put his foot heavier on the gas. He closed his eyes into headlights. Crash. I wrote that poem before I discovered my voice or why I felt so intensely, so deeply. I wrote that poem before I knew my purpose now to be a voice for the voiceless that brought me to this stage, this moment that I'm so grateful for with you. My name is Anthony DeMario and I'm a feeler or a highly sensitive person. I've battled anxiety and depression my entire life and for most of it, I had no idea. The change in season would vibrate my bones, drape me in sadness, fragile. Frantic, sensitive, I would cry so much. I was on an emotional roller coaster ride, hanging on for dear life in the dark without a seatbelt most days. I didn't understand me, so I didn't love me. Ashamed of it, afraid to be judged, so I didn't talk about it, and I fell into the stigma. I hid it well, too well. I exhausted myself to be everything that everyone wanted me to be, but me. And there I was, so loved yet so alone. 350 million people worldwide suffer from depression, yet it goes undiagnosed, undertreated, put to the side. So go pull yourself out of it. Well, if you think it's that, then I hope you hear my roar. Depression, it is not go pull yourself out of it. Depression, it's a real, silent illness. It's the ghost that haunts us in our sleep, keeping us anxiously awake. It's the chains that lock our feet to the ground to exhaust the move in the heart of a storm. Whatever storm, whatever heaviness, whatever battle you're trying to navigate, know that you're not alone, love. Know that it's okay to feel, to cry, to hurt, and to heal that heart of yours. It's okay to talk, and it's okay to be you, because the world needs your light. And by being you, you help other people be who they are. By telling your story with courage, you give others strength to find and share their voice. Our stories, they matter. So speak your truth. Here's mine. I was heading to the coffee shop. I was feeling extra this day, and I wanted to write. Writing makes me happier. I was in my car. I started to be indecisive. I started to overthink, get overwhelmed, lose control of my breath. Anxiety is a bully sometimes, isn't it? With focus and slowing down my breath, I got myself in the coffee shop. I took the first sip of my coffee, it was ice cold. I must have been motionless in the gloom for some time. Sad could crush me in a moment, cripple me, paralyze me. Depression is a monster, isn't it? Through the heaviness, I went up to get another cup of coffee. The barista, a gentleman, he saw my bracelet. He said, what is that? I said, it's BU. I'm empowering people to be who they are because that's a beautiful light that the world needs. He said, okay. I went and sat down. Before I could even sit, he came to me. He said, I don't know why I feel comfortable telling you this, but my friend took his life, and I tried to take mine. I want you to know that I'm talking. I got all the right disciplines in place. I want to live. I started to cry, and I hugged him in that moment because I needed that day. I needed that. Two weeks later, I went back to the coffee shop, and I saw this gentleman. There was sadness in his eyes, and I know that all too well. I went to my bag, I got a bracelet in the card, I wrote, you are enough. I put the card on the counter. I went back to my seat before I could get there. It came to me in tears. He said, I needed this, this today. I needed this. You don't know what battle somebody's facing, so be patient with your words. Share kindness. Storms will come and go. You, me, we, like the sun, will rise and will shine brightly through. Stay. So why me? This stage, telling my story. Well, for a bigger part of my life, my story was built on fear. Fear to lose people. I had a lot of grief growing up. Fear of the unknown. Fear of failure. Fear of being me. I wrote a story that paralyzed me. I didn't write it in a way that empowered me. I was not equipped or prepared for the storms that came rumbling in, whispering despair. I was home from college. And I came to see my stepdad, my best friend, frail and weak. My voice of reason, my voice of safety, my outlet, my best friend. He was stage four cancer. I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know how to express myself or tell him the things that I wanted to say. How grateful I was for him. So I didn't. I drove back to school. 
I lost my best friend. I started to numb my pain, abuse alcohol and cold medicine, aggression inward, self-destructive. And at that time, I had four best friends, the boys. They felt like sunlight, an amazing girlfriend, professors that believed in me, the environment that was right. But I couldn't lie to them. So I fooled myself and I fooled others that transferring colleges was the right move. It was the wrong one. I isolated myself, trying to navigate my feelings and emotions, ones that I didn't understand. And one dark night, I knew I couldn't be alone. I needed to be by my mom. So I got in my car and I started to drive. I pulled into my driveway. I walked into my house. I panned to the left and I saw my dog. And there was a stillness in the air. And I walked over the stairs and I see my superhero, my mom, unresponsive in her vomit on the stairs. The doctor the next day, he said, thankfully you came home. The truth is, I didn't save her life that night. She kept mine safe. So there I was, overwhelmed. And I couldn't handle my emotions. I fell out of college. I lost myself. I put myself in my bedroom, slipping to the depths of depression for months. And one day, my best friend Sean called me. I answered, I said, Sean, why are you calling me? He said, Aunt, because I just had the worst day and you always make me smile. I can't tell you that my life changed at that moment, but I got enough energy. I went to my dresser, got a card. It was a therapist that was recommended to me. I got myself in my car, and I didn't know how powerful music was then to improve the mood, elevate the state, but I put my favorite song on, and I didn't know how powerful it was to talk to yourself the right way then, but I said, Anthony, you're brave. Anthony, you're strong. Anthony, you got a reason to be. I'll never forget, it was a Thursday. I parked my car, I get out, it was lightly raining. I felt raw, vulnerable. I felt alive. I felt like me for the first time. I scheduled an appointment to talk then, and I haven't stopped talking since, because talk saves lives. I started to learn about developing my self-awareness. I wanted to get emotionally fit, curious about my emotions, understand them, develop them. I made a promise to me to improve me and what I gave every day, to grow in some way small, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, to connect, deeply connect with others, because life's built on those meaningful human connections. And to feel, oh Anthony, to feel, to write the poems I wanted to write, express gratitude. And at the core, that shift in me allowed me to de develop a, self, a deep appreciation toward life. You can't fall asleep in nostalgia or be chained by worry if you're awake, grateful in the moment. I started to spread the BU message, empower other people to be who they are. Talk about the power of a smile, expressing self-love in the mirror when you smile at yourself first each morning, and then to give that to others. It could hug someone's heart with hope and kindness in a moment. My passion was there. But as we know, life is beautiful. It's intense. It's tough. But it's unpredictable. It was 6.17 in the morning, and my mom called me. I was going through my crush routine, trying to elevate my state. I said, Mom, why are you calling me so early? She said, Anthony, i got to tell you something. Are you sitting down? I said, Mom, tell me what you got to tell me. She said, your friend took his life. I said, no, mom, I'm learning about anxiety and depression. I'm spreading the BU message. Mom, no, I made it through the heaviness. Come on, mom. And I started to get overwhelmed with regret of me, the lack of, and our friendship, and what I could have did differently. But I knew that was the mind. I scheduled an appointment with my therapist, and I knew I had to start the healing process because it's so important. But I knew I had to align my passion with something bigger than me. So I did some research. I found the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. I reached out to the director, Deborah, been an incredible mentor for me. At a local level, I started to speak and give. I found my purpose to tell my story on a mission to help stop suicide. I came alive. Suicide. On a global level, nearly 800,000 people per year die by suicide. That's one life every 40 seconds. Suicide. It's not an option. If you know somebody that's had suicidal thoughts, believe that you're the only one that knows. Show them that you care and listen. Encourage them to call their doctor or their therapist. Empower them. Help them guide them to find the appropriate resources they need. And then follow up. 
follow up. Your story, my story, our stories, they matter. They heal us. They empower us. They connect us. Like mine did recently, I was speaking to a group of students. It was a safe place. Guidance counselors and therapists, after I told my story, I said, does anybody want to share anything? This girl pulled me aside. She said, you see this tattoo? I said, yeah, it's beautiful. She said, I want you to know, this tattoo reminds me to express self-love. This tattoo covers my self-injury scars. And that was the past me. And this is the new me. And that is my truth. Her story, your story, my story, they matter. We all become relatable messages of hope for someone somewhere in the midst of their darkest battle. So never stop being you. The world needs your light. My name is Anthony DeMario, and I'm on a mission to help stop suicide. I will walk into the heart of a storm to lend my hand every time I speak to let one person know that they're not alone. I dedicate this talk in loving memory to an old friend. Forever long, 32 strong. I miss you, buddy. Thank you so much.